welcome back to this special chat with Mr. Aditya Puri. Well, let me come to uh, another issue of growth. Uh, uh, well, first let me wind up your growth uh, uh, equation. Can we say 25% volume growth into 4.3 margin would be uh, something we round the corner what? for this you? This is the Royal Wing. This, this is the HDFC I presume, Bank. This I presume is Lata is Royal Wing. No, I'm, I'm asking you. So if you want to say we? Uh, yes, we can, we can yeah, we yeah. agree that... A 25% no, volume no, growth into agree. 4 points. What we can agree is that the growth will be better than what it's been and we, the bank is in for good times. Okay. Well, uh, on that note, uh, let me shift to uh, another issue of growth altogether, inorganic growth. Uh, for the first time, we see the terrain is full because licenses are almost available on tap. Uh, we are seeing, you know, less of loan growth and therefore people looking for organic growth. Many banks are looking at buying MFIs, at least the buzz is there. Are you in that queue? No, we are not in that queue. Obviously, because we don't have a problem with loan growth. We well, don't and have a problem with loan uh, growth, uh, but, but it's a good idea, you think? Depends. Now, we have been in the MFI business for 10 years. I don't know whether you, you, you know. I'll quote another statistic. Yeah. You have been in the business of taking over small banks for the last 25 years. Correct. So, okay, Lord Krishna Bank, so we have been in Bank, the, uh, Agreed, agreed. Central so we have been in the MFI business and uh, MFI business we call actually sustainable livelihood because it's a great thing for the country. Mm -hmm. The more the merrier because you're actually taking a set of skills who will really not acquire very much more skills through education, but they have a set of skills that can be monetized. And that's been growing very well. So do I see a good future for MFI? Yes. For a large bank, can it move the needle? I'd say no, because these are 15, 20,000 rupee loans. How large are you going to be a, as an MFI, even though we are about Nevertheless, to Nevertheless, would you be attracted to buying any of them? We may not be attracted, but we may set up. If we, if we do decide that we want to have a uh, larger, and this is off the cuff, so don't look so this thing, I'm just having a conversation with you. No, no, therefore you are not at all thinking of an inorganic move? Uh, to, to buy an MFI? No, for the simple reason that we've been in this business long enough to know that we may not have a full understanding of what we are buying, and we do have the capability very quickly to scale up, even if we were to set up on our own, and our MFI business within the bank is growing at 40%. Okay, so when I ask uh, inorganic move, for an MFI, no. no. For anything else? Always. Like what? Like whatever is available at a good price and will add to our uh, franchise. NBFC or bank? Could be NBFC or a bank, but none of them are available at a good price, so it's a hypothetical What would be your question. preference? My preference would be both. If it adds, I'm very happy to acquire anything that is accretive to the shareholder, which means it has to be at the right price. Today, most most people that you would look at are being quoted at prices which are not viable. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fair, but uh, uh, there are a lot of small banks uh, available. Yeah, but Lata, for me, I'd much rather, when I say our prospects are bright, we're going to be roaring along. So I'd rather manage that growth than try and get slowed down by something where having uh, done acquisitions before, it's not very easy to assimilate. And if, uh, an outside party in here, it slows you down. Mm -hmm. And the prospects for our growth are so good that I don't want anything slowing us down. Okay. Many our people are trained, our technology is there. Uh, we've got a hell of a lot to do between now and October. We've done a hell of a lot between January and now, and we've got a lot to do in terms of our having our, the right flexibility in the systems, uh, moving to a frictionless experience for the customers, uh, more on analytics tailoring our products directly to the customer needs, being able to give it to him at a uh, better price than anybody else at a click of a button. So we got a lot to do. Uh, let me come to the other issue, which is plaguing obviously the rest of the banking sector, barring a few, you, you few banks, uh, the NPA um, problem. Uh, do you think uh, it looks solvable in this year at least? I mean, we've been waiting for a longish bit. You're a ringside watcher, that's why. No, because I think it's solvable. I think the parties concerned have realized that it can't be solved by the banks alone. Uh, it has to be solved between the banks and the government. Uh, I would go by what uh, I think, uh, uh, who was it, Arvind Subramaniam or somebody who's today in the newspapers, basically it's also a political issue. It is. 
in the sense that the, if today, you know, you already have uh, people being called suit, boot, sarkar for nothing, and now if you start waving. Mm -hmm. But I think it's imperative enough that we find a professional basis to actually uh, bite the bullet as it comes. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's more than enough solutions that are being discussed, and I do believe that the, uh, it's not something that we can carry on indefinitely. So before the end of the year should be a reasonable estimate. Uh, but no, you described it very well. Uh, it is, uh, you know, on the one hand, you have to take haircuts, yeah. and on the other hand, you need to avoid the charge of cronyism. Exactly. Uh, how, what would be your advice to the government? How does, how do you yeah, solve this? Yeah, because, because remember one thing. Uh, uh, this government did not create the NPA issue. I think that's something that needs to be understood. And so if they can come in and say we are sorting out things that we inherited, I think would probably be the only, I think not enough people have come out and said that the NPA issue was not here. And I'm only not, I'm not saying this because I, I'm for one government or another. I'm just saying I'd like as an Indian this issue to be solved and if, if the new government takes a professional decision, it should not be allowed to uh, come down to politics because they did not create it. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know, there are a lot of ideas like uh, Arun Subramanian is speaking about a bad bank or about a government owned ARC or somebody See, today talking about an SBI driven possible. ARC. Lata, all of that is possible, but it doesn't get you away from the basic and that's why... Which is you, the haircut issue. Which is the haircut issue, which is why I've stepped beyond what I normally, I normally don't make such kind of statement, but it's important enough and the only reason I've said is that they didn't create it, that they should get the sanctity to be able to solve it. Okay. Well, there are moves to have a, a, a legal, uh, an oversight committee with a yeah. statutory we'll basis. Come up with is that... Like uh, that? I think so. Th that could uh, yes. solve the problem, yes. you think? Yes. Okay. okay. Well, the other idea that has come from the Reserve Bank, more as a discussion paper, is the wholesale bank, which looks very much like the old DFI, uh, the old ICICI, IDBI. Mm. Uh, is there a scope for such a wholesale bank? I mean, their argument being that current uh, universal banks are not lending, uh, are not uh, able think, to lend long term. I think if somebody can figure out where he's going to get his long term funding from. If I ask you to figure out. I, I can't figure out. <laughs> so you think that it's a difficult institution? I'm not, I don't think at all. I, I, I don't want to be in that business. I'm not in that business. Consequently, no, no. I don't want to comment on the business. No, no, no. They you must don't have want to be in the through. business. You're doing well as a universal uh, bank and more uh, than well. And we are but lending. Is that concept workable? It didn't work in a previous avatar. It would work if we have enough long-term depositors, just like the debt market. Mm -hmm. So it's about the same issue so They're talking of one crore deposits as minimum. Uh, for see, that. I haven't really, uh, Lata, gone into it uh, largely enough, but I don't think it's a great business idea for us. Mm. Wanted to come to that point you spoke about the rupee, the stability of the rupee. Uh, is it now getting to a stage where you would worry about a strong rupee hurting the economy? Today, dollar is less than 64. Mm. Let me put this differently. Is the rupee today at at a value that is probably higher than it should be, the answer has to be a yes. Because it's not dependent on fundamentals. The reason why the rupee has strengthened to this extent is uh, because of the flows coming in. I don't think the rupee is going to strengthen much more beyond this. Okay. Our own economist, Abik, is saying that by the end of the year, we're likely to see about a 67 per okay. odd. Because the FII is not something that continues uh, you know, the, the, the whole world they have to look at and that keeps changing. So if those flows were to reduce to some extent, you would see the rupee starting to correct. For the public sector banks, uh, the governor uh, has spoken about consolidation, as has everyone else. What would be your recipe to solve this problem of so many public sector banks and quite a few of them practically maimed on capital? See, there, 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 there are two parts to it. Firstly, we must understand that financial services in this country, demand exceeds supply. Mm. So I would put a lot Still, of Still, even now, oh, demand yes. exceeds supply? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With all these banks' licenses given? Yeah, yeah, yeah no problem, no okay. problem. Because, because where 60% of India lives, uh, yes, yes. Lata, they, 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 most banks are only, and then you'll say I'm blowing my own trumpet, but no, that's not the fact. We are very 
concerned with the country. Ah, so is SBI. There are more SBI ah, uh, rural but branches than HDFC. Ah, I wanted oh, come you. On. Okay, wait, Lata. I wanted you to put both your feet into it. Okay. How many of the rural branches are on the asset side of the balance sheet, other than priority sector lending? Yeah, but priority sector is forty percent. But then I, I, I also do forty percent. By the way, I'm forty-one percent. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And I'm telling you now that for most rural demand. I'm one of the few banks that is there on the asset side of the balance. Congratulations! Thank I'm you, sorry. thank you, thank you. I waited for that reaction. Okay, so well, I began with congratulations. And that's where sixty percent lives, uh, Ratham. So there, the demand demand is just phenomenal. Coming to the banks itself, obviously, we a uh, lot of them have a very good brand. They've got the government behind them. They can do very well. So uh, for that. Uh, Merger is not the only issue that is required. So you, you've got to have their service conditions, you've got to have, give the flexibility to the management, you've got to have independence of board, which is what I think the bank board is looking at. So I don't think consolidation necessarily alone will solve the issue. So it's, it's the overall composite business model that we need to be very clear on, where State Bank does a very good job. Absolutely. So if all of them look like State Bank, we'd be at a different lot. And I have an indirect stake in, as an Indian, you know, that, that, that's, that's my money too. No, no, State Bank certainly proves the point that, you know, you can't say just because it's public sector, it's exactly. not working, they work beautifully. So, so whether it's mergers, whether it's a revamp, and capital remains an issue and they will have to put uh, uh, capital in. But if you look at it, they've, they've got real estate in there that they can uh, take. So there's lots so of service that conditions and board independence is here. Well, uh, finally, uh, uh, Mr. Puri, on service charges, that's yeah. where uh, HDFC Bank uh, does come in for criticism. That uh, uh, you guys charge for everything. Sometimes even if you put your foot into the branch, you, you charge. Uh, I mean, uh, is, has it come to a point where the Reserve Bank now has to start blowing the whistle and, uh, you know, actually uh, no. the control first, uh, charges? First, first, I have to get the facts correct. Okay, sure. Why are you singling me out? I am not the highest in service charges. I hope you are aware of that. I am not saying you are the highest. Uh -huh. I said you are not criticized for anything, but this criticism but, but first, is legitimate. By, let's go one by one, no? Okay. My charges are no higher than anybody else. Higher than SBI, I mean. No, not, not, not correct again. See, today, Lata, what am I doing here? Normally, you come well researched. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, let us presume that since I'm better researched, sure. my statement is correct. Okay. So, my charges are in line with the market. So, you accept that? Mm. Second is, I think, uh, the uh, SBI Deputy Managing Director, Mr. Kumar, I think his name was, was on mm. your channel explaining the basis. Mm. The issue is that if it costs a bank money, we have to charge. But we should not have a usury charge. So whether it is now if you say, oh, this big debate about MDR, mm -hmm. somebody has to put the terminal, somebody has to put the line, somebody has to pay for the security, otherwise you say it's not. So if it's going to cost us, we have to charge. So I take strong umbrance to the fact that you are even implying that we are usury and we are not here for the benefit of the country and we are providing you services at a lower cost than we should be. And by the way, as, as a good present for me because I've been so kind and I always give you an interview, please compare the charges of Indian banks with charges all over the world and you'll find it is the lowest. Do you think that uh, charges need to get... I eligible? think charges should not be usury. I think banks are not in a monopoly. I think between the Reserve Bank and us, the charges, the, it's, RBI is a very good regulator who has ensured that the charges are reasonable. If there was ever a case of uh, usury, I think they would step in. More importantly, I don't think we are that type to affect our brand. So we provide convenience at the best price on a digital or physical basis. And we do hope we can build up relationships despite Lata saying we charge higher. Okay, well, uh, let me leave it on a pleasant note. Uh, uh, it is pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Puri, no, it, yours has been a scintillating performance in the fourth quarter, and you give us hope that uh, the economy is definitely turning for the better. On that note, thank you very much for joining us on CNBC TV. Thank you, Lata. Pleasure. <laughs>